I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Peggy Romero. Thank you so much for joining me today. Finally, it's Saturday. And this week, we have been talking about healing. So healing is the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again, or alleviate a person's distress or anguish, like time can heal the pain of grief. Of course, there's lots of natural methods of healing, acupuncture, aromatherapy, naturopathy, Reiki, meditation, massage therapy, homeopathic, hypnotherapy, probably lots more. There's so many types of healing and countless ways that we can be healed. And we're human. We need healing because we're going to get hurt. So at one time or another, most of us, well, all of us, will need to be healed in some way or other, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So, you know, I've been in positions where I've needed all three of them at the same time. Physically, we may, mean, we may need a doctor to like set a broken bone or diagnose a virus, give us a prescription, or maybe repair us in surgery. Spiritually, when we need this, we can turn to the ultimate healer, the Holy Spirit, God, who is called Jehovah Rapha in the Bible, which actually means the healer. Uh, when we need our emotional needs healed, then we can turn to therapists, friends, and other people. But what about when we have a broken heart? How do you heal a broken heart? Of course, you guys know me. I have a plethora of songs running through my head right now, but I'm going to spare you today because I want to get to talking about a broken heart. We get broken hearts because we get hurt often. And our hearts are so important, not just our physical heart, you know, beating and, you know, being healthy at heart which of course is everything, but our emotional heart matters. Our heart is our creation mind. Our heart is like our spiritual connection to God. We need it. And I hate to say this, but I spent most of my life with a broken heart. It really hurts. I've been disappointed so many times it's not even funny. And I did the same things over and over again my whole life, hoping for a different outcome, trying to feel whole and loved giving too much to another person, trying too hard, loving people who didn't love me back, or at least not able to love me back in the way that I need to be loved, the way I feel love. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, stress mastery. It can heal a broken heart. I promise you. You don't have to live the same life tomorrow as you did yesterday. You can let go of the pain of your past. You can self-author your own life. You really can learn to love and have healthy, strong relationships. You can um, begin to have faith in yourself, and you too can realize and actually know that you are a beautiful, wonderful person, deserving of all great things. You don't have to go back to the way things were in the past, trying to relive things that didn't work out. You can learn to let go of the programs that are holding you back, but you have to decide that you're worth it. So last week we talked about self-love, Are you willing to do the things that you need to do so that you can have a better tomorrow? Are you going to allow yourself to do what you need to do to heal? I've told you guys before that I never thought I was worthy. The only reason I started Stress Mastery was because I was afraid I was going to have a stinking heart attack. I mean, a physical one. I hate drugs. And here I was. I was on drugs. And here's the thing. I was in terrible shape physically. Awful shape emotionally. Spiritually, a bit shaky. Fortunately, I've always known that God had a better plan for me. But boy, other than that, I was a wreck. When I met with Bill, I liked him. He came highly recommended by my sister. So I already really liked him vicariously through her. You guys, he saved my life. Stress mastery saved my life. So five life categories, right? My career was okay. But that was only because I'd figured out how to do it well. And I put my whole life into it. My finances were good because I had decided when I was a really young girl that I wasn't going to spend every penny that came into the house, and I didn't. So fortunately, since my career had been doing well, my finances were in good shape too. Relationships, though, suffering for sure. My marriage, I thought, was okay, but I soon realized that that was because I was giving the 99% 
I put 99% into the 100% pot every day, which didn't leave too much for him to have to do. And I didn't take enough time for my other relationships, so they were all suffering. I just didn't have anything to give to anyone else. Spiritually, well, like I said, God doesn't let go of, of me too easily, so I was doing okay. <laughs> but I was so stuck in my beliefs that you couldn't tell me anything. So I'm not sure how okay I really was. Now, let's just say I know for sure that God's got my back. Last year, last month, last week, last decade, you get the picture. God's been there for me my whole life. And that has always been enough for me. So I can say thank you, God. Because at the time that I met Bill and started Stress Mastery, that was all I really had. The last category, my health, wow, I've changed that a lot. I'm still not where I'm going to end up because I'm still growing, but so much better than I was. So we're talking about healing today, right? So I'm the girl that doesn't even like to take an aspirin, and fortunately, I've been healthy my whole life. In some ways, I've kind of beat the crap out of myself. I mean, I didn't eat right, I didn't sleep well, and I took my good health for granted because I was never sick. I think using muscle is really great. Staying active is always good, and I did that. But I'm not sure. I might have pushed myself you know, too hard when I was young. I'm not sure if I did or not. I was always on the move and working really hard. And I did, you know, stress my body a lot. And I remember this one time a friend of mine came by my house and said, Peggy, you're constantly working like a man. Do you really think your body's going to hold up? Man, I was so insulted to be compared to a man. I mean, I'm a girl. I'm just a physically hardworking girl. I was building a fence that day. I mean, post hole digger, bags of concrete, four by four posts, hinges, fence boards, you know, all of it. I could toss them around like they were nothing. Honestly, I'm 60 now and I still could do that today. I could go out and build you a fence right now if you needed me to. Uh, so I'm not really sure why it bugged me so bad. Maybe I thought she ought to pick up a board and help me since I'm a girl. <laughs> I don't really know. And you know what? It doesn't activate me anymore. So I guess since I've let it go, I should just forget about it. After working with Bill... Back to, back to my beginning with Stress Mastery. After working with Bill for several months, I went to see Dr. Brian in Florida. Believe me, this was completely out of my comfort zone. So I had made the decision to start doing better in my life. So this meant like I had agreed to personal development. I didn't know that I was going to be getting sent to a medical doctor for a bunch of tests. I was resistant, as usual. And I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. Like I didn't want to spend my money to, you know, get on a plane, get a hotel, go to a doctor who doesn't take my insurance, pay for tests that aren't going to be covered, take care of myself to, to this degree. Really? I mean, is this really necessary? I mean, is it really necessary? Guys, completely out of my comfort zone to take care of myself like this. Remember, back then I never thought I was worthy of anything. So it took months for Bill to get me to do this. I knew that it was important because he kept on me about it over and over, reminding me that he needed this information to help me. You guys, I was so overweight. Every joint in my body hurt. As a matter of fact, I had carpal tunnel surgery scheduled at the time. They were going to do one hand and then the other. Surgery on both. My joints hurt so bad that when I woke up in the morning, my hands had to like get under hot water and I had to start, you know, working them out. And I had bursitis in my right shoulder. I could barely lay down at night because of the pain. It was awful. Luckily, a friend of mine had this special pillow that I could lay on, and it worked really well. I'm not sure how, but it really did work. My right knee hurt so bad it wasn't even funny. I was on blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication, thyroid medication. My diet was awful. And of course, I learned right away that the body supports the mind, so I did start cleaning up my diet a lot eating in a window, drinking lots more water. So when I finally went to see Dr. Brian, I found out that my hormones were completely out of whack. So he put me on these natural hormones that give you energy and, I mean, everything you need. It was amazing for me. I think I even started feeling better on my way out of the office that day. <laughs> just kidding. I am just kidding. Because actually my bottom hurt all the way home because I had to go sit on a plane for hours. Okay, all kidding aside. Dr. Brian says to me in that appointment, you're on blood pressure medication, but it's not very strong. So do you want to keep refilling that forever and take more and more? Or do you want to just make a commitment to going for a walk every night? Hmm. 
Uh, you have sleep apnea and you're not using a CPAP. So yeah, you're not getting enough oxygen. This is really bad for your brain. You need to get one today. Uh, he tested my cholesterol and a bunch of other stuff. But this cholesterol test wasn't just like high or low HDL, LDL, like we're all used to. This uh, test really dug into the particles um, inside the cholesterol. And after that, I didn't even need to take the cholesterol medication anymore. So I didn't have to take blood pressure medication after a few months either because he was able to reduce it by, just by me walking at night, making a commitment, and then he reduced it some more. And then I began getting so lightheaded that I just quit taking it. And I don't have to take blood pressure medication anymore, you guys. I'm healed and not by a pill. I'm healed by taking a walk. I'm healed by caring about myself. I changed my diet and I don't have high cholesterol anymore at all. So now the last couple of years, all I have to do is take my thyroid medication, which apparently you can't get off of. <laughs> Talk about healing yourself. I did it. I feel so much better. I'm pretty good at healing myself. Apparently, I just need a little guidance. Well, honestly, <laughs> if you asked Bill, he would tell you I need a lot of guidance. <laughs> but I can tell you, it is worth it. I know for sure that the seven, step, seven steps of stress mastery changed my life. I promise. There's no doubt about it. Bill Courtright knows his stuff, and he knows what he's talking about. If I can change, anyone can. Believe me. So remember what I said, the uh, definition of healing is the process of making or becoming sound or healthy again. So here you go. Here's the seven steps of stress mastery because these will make you sound and healthy again. Doesn't matter how old you are, what shape you're in, good, bad, where you live, whatever. Step one, diet. Step two, exercise. Number three, name the ego. Step four, let go technique. Step five, green focus power hour. Six, meditation. Seven, finding the now. You guys, this stuff works. Please, please go into the Stress Mastery community for free. Look up all these resources and print them out. Read them, study them, understand them. Just get started. Then take one practice at a time. Decide where you want to start and then do that. Let that become a habit. Next thing you know, you'll be highly skilled. Hold on to that and it will become a part of who you are. So the past year, I've been working on my sleep. I've slept for six hours or less for as long as I can remember, at least since my 20s. And I felt good. I've been fine. But our bodies heal while we sleep. So knowing that I need to take care of myself and heal the things every day that are going on in my body, a lack of sleep then is neglecting myself, right? So I bought an Aura Ring and it works really well. And although my HRV is really good, it's always telling me that I need more sleep. So I had to change my habit of going to bed at like 9, 9, 30, 10 o'clock because I wake up at 4 in the morning and I've woke up at 4 a.m. so long that I like it. I really like it. I'm awake when no one else is. I get several hours worth of stuff done before the world wakes up and for some reason, it's great. It feels fantastic to me and I'm really used to it. I like my time to myself in the morning. And I like that a lot better than like having the time at night. So in the morning, I'm productive. At nighttime, I just relax and watch TV. So I guess maybe that's it. You get to start the day at your own pace instead of the pace of the world. So I had to train myself to go to bed earlier if I was going to get enough sleep. And I had to decide that I am worth taking care of my body. I'm worth what it's going to take to heal. And so since it's hard to go to bed earlier, I mean, it's hard to change. I live alone and uh, in the winter, like right now, I'm in a resort in Arizona. And so people play games and cards and there's all kinds of stuff that starts at 6.30, which is after dinner for people. Well, I don't want to go do those things because I'm going to get home too late. So I have to decide that I'm going to spend the evening alone and how many nights I'm going to stay out late. And people always want you to go out to dinner, but they don't want to go out to dinner at four o'clock. You know, <laughs> I like to get home early and go to bed. When you're trying to go to bed at eight o'clock, you can't go out to dinner at six o'clock. So if I stay up till 10 or 11, I'm waking up at four, then I'm only going to have five or six hours of sleep because I'm getting up at four, usually. So 
This has been a very big undertaking this past year, a real commitment on my part. Now, everybody around here knows I go to bed early and so do my kids and my friends, so nobody calls me in the evening, so that's all handled. They don't ask me to come over to dinner as often. Okay, I just have to handle that. And when they do, they'll say, hey, can we do 4.30 or 5 o'clock? Super sweet, thank you. They know that I'm, if I'm gonna hang out after dinner that I can't do it any later. So fortunately, people like me enough and I still have plenty to do, but it's definitely been an adjustment. We also need to drink lots of water. I read somewhere that water is like the main chemical component in our body. It's like 60 to 70% of our body is made up of water, something like that. I'm sure you guys might know more than I do. I know Bill does. At any rate, we all need lots of water. But if you don't plan it out like all day and start the day strong drinking it, you're not going to end up doing it. So if you try to catch up at night, you know you're going to end up having to get up all night long going to the bathroom and nobody wants that. And so I do pretty well on my simple plan. I plan to drink a quart of water before I have my second cup of coffee. I also drink my water in a quart jar because it makes it easier for me to track my water instead of guessing how many I've drank. You know, glasses are hard to count. So, and that's a really good point, you guys. You got to make it easy for you. You got to do what works for you. It doesn't matter how anyone else does anything. All that matters is what works best for you. So do the things that feel right to you because all of these things that I'm telling you and all that you're going to learn in the community have to be done with the right mindset because you have to be connected to your heart. We call that a green focused mind. So the more of these practices that you can put into your life, the easier it's going to be to have a green focused mind. And you know what it feels like when your mind's right. That's the green zone. That's what we're looking for. And of course, we all need the right diet and exercise because the body supports the mind. So I'm certainly not trying to overwhelm you, and I'm not suggesting that you do these all at once. But when you can do all of these things at once, you are going to feel so good. All of these practices will help you heal every day. Healing instead of deteriorating sounds pretty good, right? Sure does to me since I'm getting older now. And don't forget grace. I try my best to give myself grace because I need it. Like just using the sleep, for example, I struggled and struggled so much with it. I became obsessed with my clock and what time is it? And can I get up yet? And I don't like to keep my phone in my room. And I used to have a clock in there and I would constantly look at it. So then I turned it away from me and then I would have to get up and turn the clock so I could see what time it was. So I got rid of my clock. So this kind of made things worse for a while because then I had to get up out of bed and go out in the other room to see what time it was. But I got this great idea to simplify things. I thought of a great idea. I have this little battery operated candle and it's you know just like a little tea light candle but it's battery operated. So it's on a timer and the timer comes on every morning at 4 a.m. So I have this stashed in the corner of my night table, night table and I have a picture in front of it. So it's not shining on me at all. It just casts a gaze like up on the ceiling and on the wall. So the last thing I need is that little sucker to wake me up at four o'clock. But the cool thing is it doesn't wake me up. <laughs> so if I roll over and look to that corner of my room and the light's not on, I can just close my eyes and go back to sleep. There's nothing to think about. My ego, Lucy, doesn't have to start wondering what time it is or decide if I'm tired or ready to get up. It doesn't matter what time it is. It's not four o'clock yet, and I don't get up before four o'clock. It's as simple as that. And you guys, these little things like this completely make life easier. So just like I said with my quart jar of water, there's no more, oh, did I mark that glass? Did I do this to keep track or that? My first quart, I drink with my coffee, so I know... When I'm done drinking coffee, I'm done with my water. My second one is refilled probably by about seven o'clock or so. And that takes me a couple hours to drink. So then when I get my third one, I put flavored water drops in it. Now I have this mental thing. I know I'm on my third quart. And when I'm done with that, my next one's not flavored. So that's my fourth. Simple, really, really simple. But it makes a difference. Another thing is I finally got it through my head that if I eat the same breakfast every day, it makes it easier. So I ate the same exact thing for breakfast every single day. I just started that, but I like it. I know what to expect. 
So now I make uh, oatmeal four servings at a time. So it lasts me four days. So twice a week I make my breakfast. I mean, how much easier can it be? And the really cool thing about all of this, you guys, is the more little things like this that you do for yourself, the more practices that you put into place, the more you remind yourself that you love you. I love myself. I need to take care of myself. The more things that you do for yourself, the more you realize, yeah, I am worth it. I'm worth the extra time that it takes to do this. Then one day, you'll suddenly notice that your broken heart is healed. The less expectation that you're going to have on yourself and others. I mean, I've always been more forgiving of others than I am of myself. But over the past few years since coaching, listening to the podcast, being in the community with other like-minded people and living stress mastery, I realize that I have so much more grace for myself. I am worthy. I really am whole, perfect, powerful, and strong. I am totally loving, harmonious, and happy. I'm healthy and peaceful. Blessings are chasing me down. They really are every single day. And you guys, I want you to know that for yourself too. You see, we're blessed to be a blessing to others. And part of my healing process is going from being the patient to being the physician. So part of my responsibility is to be willing to share my experience with another person. So I'm sharing it with you. My heart's been healed so much. So now I can help heal a broken heart by sharing my experiences, what works for me. And you see, you're also blessed to be a blessing to someone else. And there's so many people in despair Ask yourself, who can you help by using what you've gone through? Somebody needs you. Somebody needs your healing touch. And helping healing, helping heal someone else is going to help heal you even more. So are you willing to start healing today? I hope you say yes. So here's a good idea. Go into the Stress Mastery community right now and try it free for 30 days. You can get everything you need out of there. Like I said, go through the resources, find it all, print it out, put it in a notebook and spend some time checking it out while you're in there. I'm not really sure if you realize that before, besides just the resources, I never say this, but there's so much more in there. We have this whole community posting thing and it's really like a super healthy Facebook, if you picture that. <laughs> but like I said, healthy, healthy in mind, body and spirit and everybody in there is willing to help you, they're lovely people. And of course, I've completely changed my life around, so I'm available to live the life that I've always dreamed of, and my heart's desire is to help other people, and that includes you. So reach out to me if you think I can be of any help. Happy to help. I will make myself available to talk to you and help you in any way I can. So let's stay connected, okay? Follow me at Peggy with Purpose on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You can also visit my website at Peggy with Purpose or PeggyRomero.com will take you there. I have resources that may help you on your journey. And of course, you can purchase my book in there too. You guys, I hope that this helps you. I hope that you'll start your healing today. And I thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I am so grateful that you guys like my show. And that is it for today's podcast. Remember, our mission here is to create a shift in the planet, and you can join us on that mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. And thank you to Janet, who gave me a really awesome review. As always, until next time, stay inspired.